Uh, welcome to Advanced Media Skills. Uh, this is going to be uh, first of a series of tutorials on complex service modeling in Rhino. Um, this is actually going to be part one of two, I suspect. Uh, looking at creating more complex objects inside of Rhino using more surface-oriented modeling strategies. Um, part of your first assignment is going to be to recreate or digitally model uh, objects uh, in, as part of your studio. As, as part of your studio. Um, and this is just showing um, certain methodologies, certain strategies you could be using to create these objects. Okay. Now, the object that I have chosen to kind of demonstrate this is specifically the receiver of a Model 500 of a Western Electric rotary phone. Um, it's a ubiquitous object that you see, or ha historically have seen all, all over the place. Um, it fits in the hand really, really well, um, and it was a, a designed object meant for mass, mass production. Millions upon millions upon millions. Um, this came about in like the 1950s and 60s, but specifically what we're looking at is this. Uh, this is the Western Electric 554. Uh, specifically, this is the Stromberg Carl Carlson version of the Western Electric 554. They actually license this design from Western Electric. Um, this, the 554, which is what we see, is the wall hanging version of the 500, which is the tabletop version. Um, and this is just a fun advert from 1956 talking about the, uh, the, uh, the wall hanging ver version of the 554. Um, this was actually designed by a man named Henry Dreyfus, uh, circa 1947-1948. And the thing that's going to help us to recreate this digitally is I actually was able to find the patent drawing for specifically the receiver. Um, there is no flat surfaces anywhere on this. It's all curves of some way, of some form. Um, and we could, in theory, <laughs> model this without any sort of aid of additional drawings, orthographics, or otherwise, but because of the complex surfaces of this, having some sort of orthographics to go off of is going to be extremely, extremely helpful. Um, and here are some additional images of this receiver. Uh, this phone is actually a friend of mine's. Uh, he's letting me borrow it. Um, so we see just a whole bunch of very subtle but distinct curvature uh, inside corner fillets, um, parting lines, and other various details. Um, one of the things we're going to be talking about is, spe is, is specific modeling strategies that we have to think about as we go along, as we go ahead and model this within Rhino. Um, this is going to seem like a fairly linear process, but I can assure you it is anything but. Um, the modeling that we're about to do, I've already done multiple times as methods of practice. Uh, the first time I modeled this, it actually took me quite a while because it took because I had to figure out particular strategies that enables enabled me to actually create the different ver the different surfaces um, of this phone. Um, let's see. So we're going to minimize this. We're going to minimize this. And we're, let's open Rhino. Now I'm using Rhino 7 for Mac. 
Um, it doesn't really matter if you use Rhino for Mac or Rhino for Windows. Um, I actually use both. Um, I actually kind of prefer Rhinos for Windows, um, but it doesn't really matter. So it'll make a new model. Do, do, do. Anytime now, anytime now. All right, so here we go. Uh, just making everything pretty. Um, Rhino is a, like I said, a, a surface modeler, specifically a NURBS surface modeler. And what that really means to us is all, every surface that we are generating is mathematically defined. Okay, and now, unlike, say, SolidWorks or Fusion 360, which are classified as solid modelers, Rhino being a surface modeler, what we're, what we're specifically doing and, what, and how we specifically want to think about this is what we're creating are individual surfaces. Okay, and then trimming and joining to create the complex or creating the form that we're looking to make. Okay, now Rhino is fantastic because it allows you to do lots of different things and do the same thing in lots of in several different ways, um, which is both, in my opinion, both good and bad. It's good because it allows for individual personality to come into play. How I model is not how you would model, and how you model is not how I would model, and how you model is not how your friends would model. Um, we all process information differently. We all think about things differently. Um, there's lots of different methods of getting from A to B. So. This is also, unfortunately, the bad thing, because since there is so many different ways of moving from A to B, <laughs> there's no one way of doing it. Okay? So what you're going to find, or what I suspect you're going to find, is there's going to be a lot of doing and undoing and then redoing and then undoing to kind of get everything to work the way that you want to do it. Very, very, very rarely. Is it a sing simple singular process where you start the model and you finish the model and nothing goes wrong and you get exactly what you want? That hardly ever happens. I, you know, in in a way to explore uh, to ex explain like my, the type of modeling that I do, it tends to be fairly exploratory. And what I mean by that is, if I've never modeled an op this particular object before. It's, well, let's try it this way, let's see if that works, or let's try it this other way, let's see if that works, and if that doesn't work, well, let's try it this way, and then slowly but surely developing the form, developing a methodology that works. Okay. Now, I personally detest the grid. I think it can just go away. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to edit, uh, I'm sorry, edit view, Grid options and show grids. Heck no, turn that off. Okay, so here we are in model space around the origin. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import our patent drawing into Rhino and use that to do help generate our model. So the command I'm going to use for that is picture and phone patent drawing this is just off my desktop open first corner picture and second now this actually brings the picture in as a surface now we like this because it actually is going to allow us to edit it the surface to generate um, the particular layouts we want for the modeling Okay, now, our overall goal is to recreate digitally the physical object. 
as closely as we can with the understanding that it's not going to be 100%. That's fine. Our goal is like 95, maybe 90. Okay. Um, the other thing is we're going to start off, so we're going to start off with a couple of basic assumptions. Basic assumption number one is that this curvature in the side view, along where the handle is, is essentially an arc or uh, an arc of a circle. Okay. Um, that's basic assumption number one. Basic assumption number two is that the, uh, this object is symmetrical along this center line here. So this side is the same as this side, except this is just a mirror of that. Okay. So symmetrical geometry from here to here. If we imagine a center line going along the center of this. Bas basic assumption number two is that it is not symmetrical, the object is not symmetrical from this side to this side. Now, the first time I modeled this, I made the assumption that it was, and come to find out that it wasn't. Okay. So again, this is part of that appear, uh, uh, appearance of, of a linear workflow, but it is anything but. Okay. So not symmetrical from this side to this side. Um, now, we really lucked out um, because in this patent drawing is figures five and six, which are essentially sections of the form of the handle, which out of everything has the least amount of information just from the, the side elevation to the, to the top to the, to the bottom. Um, this is going to help us a lot uh, whenever we go to model this handle geometry here. Okay, so first thing we want to do is I'm going to go to top view and I'm going to select a layer three or the layer three and I'm going to call this layer working lines. This is my own particular workflow. I like to name things, I like to keep things as organized as I possibly can. Um, I'm also going to be using a lot of color to help distinguish between different layers. Um, this allows us just to see what's what. Um, having lots of stuff on different layers is also a great way to organize things through the modeling process. Uh, so we can turn stuff on, turn stuff off, so on and so forth. Um, this surface which is on default, all right. We're gonna call this Patent Drawing, DWG for short. So we can turn that on and off. Uh, leave this here. Now, I wouldn't say that I have a little OCD when it comes to this, but one of the things I really, really, really like is keeping things organized. Not to the obsessive degree, but a little bit of organization helps a lot further down the line. Um, all right, so what we want to do is split this view and this view and this view and these views from the surrounding surface. Um, so I'm just going to type in rectangle and we're just going to make a box there to there. There to there. You'll notice that there, this rectangle, these rectangles that I'm making are of no particular size. Um, it's just methods, are just geometry created to split from the surrounding surface. Okay, so we have our boxes. We're going to type in the split. Right. Select the surface. Select cutting objects, and right, one surface split into seven pieces. Beautiful. So we can take that as a background, delete that nonsense. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn this off for just a second, and I'm going to, to delete that geometry because we don't need it anymore. 
All right, now I'm going to save. Uh, we'll save to the desktop and we'll call this uh, tutorial one version three. This is my own naming convention. Uh, this is actually, yeah, this is the third time I'll model this. And save. All right, now you probably already know this, but it bears to be, re it bears repeating. The best thing you can do for yourself is save often. Now Rhino does have an auto save function, which is nice. Um, a lot of softwares don't. But what we want to do is to make sure that we don't model for like an hour, don't save anything, and then for some reason the auto save doesn't work and then <laughs> everything crashes and we lose everything. I can tell you from experience that it's painful to the nth degree. Okay, so we're not going to worry about scale yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to generate some geometry to help ge help us generate other geometry. Um, specifically, what I'm going to be making is centerline geometry. Um, because we're making assumptions and non-assumptions about uh, symmetrical elements of the, of the form, uh, we're going to base everything off of center lines, and I think it'll be more. It'll be more, you'll understand this more kind of as we go along. So layer one, I'm going to call this center line, center line geometry, and I like red. It's a nice color, and because I don't want to move this white yet, I'm going to lock. The patent drawing layer. Make centerline geometry active. Okay, so where to begin? We are going to begin with um, with the top view. Okay, so what we want is a center from this edge to this edge and from this curvature to this curvature. Okay, we're going to assume sake of argument that this is a direct view on and that this is going to be uh, it's not going to have any sort of distortion okay. so I'm going to say line and I'm just going to make one like that and I'm going to zoom in I'm going to move it along this edge. Okay. Now, one thing we notice, the line is touching here, and the, it's not touching here. Okay, so that means the drawing is skewed slightly. So we're going to unlock the patent drawing layer, select the surface, type in rotate, and we're going to say have our on snaps on, I'm just going to say near, and I'm going to pick, um, let's pick right here. And come over. Now, see how it's tracking 90 degrees? My, orth my ortho is on, so I'm going to turn that off for just a second. All right, now we can track whichever angle we want. Now I'm going to come over to this line, and rotate that way. So essentially this black edge of the drawing is now in line with the red line. Okay, so I'm going to take that, I'm going to say copy, I'm going to turn my ortho back on, and I'm going to bring this down until it touches the other side. And if we need to, select the curve, Move just a scotch. Okay, now there's a, a mild amount of interpretation where exactly the line starts, where exactly the line stops. You know, the fact that we can zoom in, you know, all the way, you know, is the line technically here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Uh, I'm saying, for the sake of argument, the assumption to make that I'm going off of edges of lines. 
All right. Now. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to make another line. It's going to go vertical. Select the curve. And I'm going to bring this in until we get to the edge of that. Copy. And I'm going to bring it over here. Right. And we're going to say that of these three lines that we see, <clears throat> the middle one is what we're going to use. Okay. All right. So, now that we have this, I'm going to type in line. And I'm going to make sure that I have my intersection on snap on. And actually, if we turn off pattern drawing, this will be a lot easier. All right, intersection to corner intersection. Now, this gives us, go based upon the midpoint, line both sides, line there, line again. Up and down, both sides. All right. So it gives us a center line here and a center line here. And this extra geometry, we can select and delete. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Only delete what we don't want. That, that, that. Okie dokie. Now, I'm going to select this, and we're going to move this based upon the midpoint to the origin, the XY origin. Now, we have move. If actually we just type in zero and then spacebar, it actually moves that to the origin. Fun little tidbit. Okay, so that's the top view taken care of. The next thing we want to work on is the side view. Okay, so another basic assumption. Uh, this line for figure six, we're going to assume is the midpoint uh, between this half and this half. Okay, so we're going to make a line down. Select, and we're going to move this somewhere towards the center of this drawn line. Now, the interesting thing is, this drawing was originally done in 1947. Um, it was probably scanned from the original um, and then put on the internet. Um, so the line qualities... <laughs> Well, lackluster is one way of saying it. But again, what we, what we notice, you know, it's in the midpoint, it's in the middle of the line up here, but it's off the line down here. So we're going to select this surface. We're going to type in rotate. And we're going to say start our center rotation here. Come down. All right, ortho off. Ortho off. There we go middle of the line, and snap to there. Okay. Okay, so essentially we have our center line this way. Um, what we're going to do next is make another line for the sections for five here and here. So we'll do another line something close, something close. Now again, I'm not worrying about accuracy yet. I'm getting making geometry, bringing it over, and then making the accuracy as necessary. So I'm close, but not, but not completely correct. So I'm gonna type in rotate again. Here. So essentially we're saying that the drawing is now accurate 
as much as it can be. And we'll move the line to the center. Now this bit of geometry here I think is just a dash signifying for the number, which is why I'm not aligning to it. Alright. That we'll do the same thing for this one. Move over. Rotate, starting from there, down to there. Oh, wait. Wrong way. One more time. There we go. All right, so we have center line, center line, and center line. And now we're going to make curvature for the handle. Now, again, <clears throat> we assumed, or making the assumption, that this is essentially a an arc of a circle. So we're going to come over to our circle command. I'm going to click and hold and we're going to say circle three points. First point, All right, let's pick right here. All right, second point, we're going to say right there. And I'm just picking these points at random somewhere along the line. All right, and now with the third point, Say right there. It makes a circle, and it's a fairly large arc. All right, so now what we want to do is we want another assumption we want to make. We want to make the assumption that the center of this arc, or this circle, is in line with this center piece of geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in move, point to move from, I'm going to put, click my uh, center on snap, say the center of the curse of the circle, move to that line. Okay, the center line, here this way. Now obviously it's not a line, so we're going to take, type in move again, and we're going to bring this down. Now we don't want this sort of movement, we want our ortho, because our, the center of the, of the circle is now aligned to this particular line here. So we're just going to bring it down, down, down until we get close. Right. And then kind of compare. Well, it is not. Now maybe I made the wrong assumption. Let's try that one more time. See if I screwed up somewhere. Back down. Back down. Back down. Alright. Interesting. So my assumption was wrong. Huh. All right, well, we're going to shift this over until it is aligned. Interesting. Now, I would have sworn that when I did this last time, that that worked. But either I did something wrong this time, or I did something wrong last time. All right, either way, we're going to roll with it. All right, uh, type in move. Right. Okay. Start fresh. Move. Select the object. Scooch down like so. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take... Uh, all right, so we've established this curvature here. Um, next, we're going to establish centerline geometry for the uh, the receivers, or specifically the so this is the cord end, so the earpiece and the mouthpiece. Um, so make a line, start somewhere in the center of that, 
Let's turn off our ortho. Say something like that. All right. So this line stops here, and this line stops here. Um, with and so we essentially we have center line here, but we also want a piece of center line going this way, based upon the midpoint of this curve. So I'll type in line. I'm going to have my smart track on, right near to midpoint, and haha, both sides. So this piece is now 90 degrees to this piece. All right. And so now we want to do the same thing to this side. Now we want to make sure that the geometry on this side is the same size as the geometry on this side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lock the patent drawing so I don't accidentally move anything. Right click, drag, select, type in copy based upon the midpoint. And move this over. Okay. And then we're going to say select, move bring it over to here, rotate, snap to the end, snap to the other end, and then rotate down, like so. And it's a little far on that side, so we will shift it just a scotch. Perfect. All right, so I think this is going to be all we need for that. All right, so now we're going to select this, move it down. Oop. Now, the drawing didn't move with it because it's locked. So we unlock, select, and move. Down like so. Okay, now we're going to move from our top view to our perspective view. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to align this the way that essentially the view, the in, in the views that it was drawn. So we actually want this to kind of rotate down. So type rotate, make that our rotation point. We'll go to the front, zoom out. Uh, nope, right there we go. All right. We don't want that, so ortho back on, snapping to the to the Y plane, rotate down. Back to perspective. Alright, so we're gonna select that. And we're going to say snap to this center line, and we're going to move to that center line. Okay. And let's take that, move to the front, yep. And let's move up like so. Okay. Back to perspective. So now we have these kind of overlapping images. Now One thing we can do to aid in our modeling endeavors is give these surfaces a little bit of transparency so we kind of see beyond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the patent drawing layer active, turn off the center line geometry. We're going to select everything. Come over to uh, Now, this is where the Windows versus Mac version comes into play, because I did this. I did it on the Windows machine, Windows version. Rendering. Mm. 
Sorry, guys. Spring? Do this in the report. There we go. Object properties. I think. There we go. Sorry about that. And let's make this 70%. 70 is a nice number. All right, now the reason we like that is we can see the overlap and get an idea of the three dimensional element, three dimensional form of the object itself. All right, awesome. Now we're cooking with gas, as they say. So we'll bring this back up. Okay, cool. All right, now back to our center lines. Um, we're going to do the section views, figure five and figure six first, or next. Um, so I'm going to activate center line geometry again. Uh, come up to our top view. All right, so again, Assumptions. We're going to make the assumption that this geometry is symmetrical side to side, um, and that this is essentially all um, circle-based arcs. Okay. So what we're going to do is line down, line up and down. Oops want that. So prevent that. Lock. Move. Like so. Until it's just barely touching. Okay. Move. Like so. Until it's barely touching. Um, and we're going to say line there, over to there, which gives us an accurate midpoint going up and down. All right, so now, to get this curvature, we go back to a circle, circle three points, and again, one, try off ortho, Two, three. Take this, move center of the circle to the center of that. Move up like so. Fantastic. Okay. So now we, let's do these angled sides. So I'm just going to take this line, rotate where it is touching the side. Rotating over like that. Okay, now I'm not going to do the same thing to this. What I'm going to do, since we make the since we made the basic assumption of symmetrical elements from this side to this side. I'm going to delete that. Type in mirror. It's 
select that, use this center line as our mirror plane. And we don't want that, so let's turn on ortho again. Okay, so now we are assured of symmetricalness from side to side because we're using the mirror to essentially give us that. Um, all right, so now let's do the curvature of this piece. Uh, again, circle, three points. So there. All right, back to back off, on and off, on and off. There and there. Okay, again, we'll select that circle, move, select the center, of that circle, and we can tell it's pretty close to the center line, but move it to the center line and move it back onto the drawn line, like so. Okay, so we have like 80% of the section. We have these circle bits here, and here, and here, and here. So, what we'll do is we'll model something for this, model something for this, and then mirror those two using this center line over to the other side. And for this, I'm going to go to the circle command, and I'm going to use the circle tangent to three curves. Okay, first tangent curve, we're going to say so like that. on that line. And second, we're going to say somewhere on this line. And for the third, we're going to visually align to there. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for this. Click and hold, circle, tangent to three curves. All right, tangent along that line, tangent along that curvature, and then tangent to the drawing. Okay, so we'll just select this, hold shift, select that, mirror. All right, glorious. All right, so that's figure six. We're gonna do the same thing to figure five. Now, actually, what we should do is, again, make another assumption. That assumption is the curvature is going to be the same on the top and on the sides and along this fillet, this fillet, and possibly along this fillet as well. So I'm just going to select all of this minus that copy. I don't want it snapping all over the place, so I'm going to come over and say disable all, just for the time being. All right, and we're going to get it close. Yep, wrong button. Escape, select that, and do our finesse. Okay, now, mm, I think that will work. Now, what we'll notice is it doesn't really line very well down here. Okay. Um, We are going to say that that misalignment is based upon the uh, issue with the drawing itself. Okay. Um, again, this is just for a patent drawing. All right, these aren't the actual production models or production drawings used to make the actual object. All right, so there is a bit of uh, leniency in terms of accuracy. 
right. So we're going to say that that's close enough. And But to mimic the flat here, we're going to say line. And we're going to go from, uh, oh, let's undisable. Uh, not the center. Let's use the quadrant and the knot. Right, so quadrant to intersection. Okay. Now, I'm going to unlock that, select this, and just move it over. And let's do some trimming. So I'm going to turn off the drawing. And whoops. One more time. Let's get feeling and gusto. And all of the geometry. Move over. Turn off the pattern drawing. Okay. Trim. Select all of this. So we want trim that. Oh, select cutting objects. Oh, I'm sorry. Select objects. Trim. Okay, there we go. That and that and that and that and that and that and that. Um, and that, and that, and that, and, oops, and do, oh, problems, problems in paradise, oh, that does not align, interesting, okay, um, now we back up, now why don't you align is the question. And this is part, again, this is part of the iterative process. The fact that it didn't trim out and left this behind let me know that I had done something wrong. And it's a small issue. Very, very, very small. But an issue nonetheless. So let's delete that. And let's... All right. That's an issue there, too. Okay. We'll delete that. So, uh, let's lock that. All right, there's something wrong with my setup. All right, so let's step back. Um, let's make sure that the center of this circle is, aha, is touching the center line geometry, and it wasn't. So, all right. And just because we're here, uh, move center of the circle. All right, that's not touching either. Let's fix that. Okay. That's aligned. It's aligned, uh, and let's make increase the geometry going from, from point to point. Now, if we select and just say like line, uh, midpoint and intersection should be the same. Okay, cool. All right, so fix that. So let's recreate center of three points, each circle of three points. Center, and circle tangent to three curves. Tangent, tangent, tangent. Okay. And again, oops, click and hold. That mirror across the way. Turn this off. All right, so let's try this again. Tr 
them. Select. Uh, trim that. Oops. Okay. Select the cutting objects. Yes. Okay. Now, trim, 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 uh, trim, and trim. And we're going to leave this and these hanging off. And we'll trim the center of that, that. So we just have this curvature for the corner, this curvature for the corner, and there we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if we had trouble with this, and this was based off of that, what we want to double check is that the center of this circle is in fact on the center line and it is not. Okay, so move. Okay, now because of what of how we're going to be modeling this further down the line, the cleaner the setup we have now, the better it's going to be for us down the line. All right, so move. Don't like that. Okay, now what we really should do <clears throat> is actually, now that I think about it, let's actually delete all that. that as well, delete that as well, take all of this and say copy, and go over, actually, oh, all right, step back, 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 back to there, get rid of that again, get rid of that again, okay, so now, Take this, copy, move over, delete, and we don't need that, this top circle, so we'll delete that. Let's realign, Consistency. Consistency. Consistency is the name of the game. All right, and then we'll do a line from quadrant to intersection. Okay. There we go. Now, we'll turn those off. Trim. And we will trim this. that, and do that, and that, and that, and then do the same thing over here, that, and 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 that. okie dokie. Actually, no. Well, okay. Line escape. Actually, we want this line to come out. Do we want that? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. So we'll continue. That delete any of the extraneous stuffs. Uh, turn this back on. Go ahead and unlock. Now to make sure that I get the alignment that we need, I'm going to take all this and say group, so I don't accidentally move something and not everything else. And we'll group this together as well. Okay, uh, go back into perspective. So now we're gonna move these over to here. So I'm going to select that, and let's go to the right, rotate. Uh, now, 
I dislike using the gumball. I don't know why I don't like it, but I don't. Um, but most of what we're doing can be done using the gumball, if you so choose. I guess one of the reasons I dislike using the gumball is I like being able to type it in, type in like specific distances, which I think you can do in the gumball, but it doesn't matter. Again, personality coming into play. All right, so I'm going to rotate. Okie dokie. So now, figure six is coming over to right there. Right. So select all that. We're going to move based upon the intersection of this, this vertical center line and this curved top geometry. Okay. Snap. There. All right. There's that one. Do the same thing to this. There. I'm going to say copy. Move over to there as well. Now, things are getting a little visually cluttered. So, because we grouped everything together, or grouped these things together, um, what we can do is we can turn this off, select that. Uh, we're going to type in rotate. There, go to the front view. Yep. Select that. To that. Right, same thing on this one. Ooh, not top, front. Ooh. Rotate. Oops. Zoom in a little bit. Mm, okay. So screwed up. It's not quite where we want it. So move that to that. Okay. Zoom in. Rotate around. There we go. Okay. So that one's good. This one isn't. So select that. Front. Oops. Rotate. There. Point of rotation, go back to the front view, there to there. Okay. Now, because we grouped everything together, if we turn the pat drawing layer back on, it angled, it moved with the drawing. All right. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do this. Um, again, okay, so we want, we've already established dimension across here. And we want the dimension of this to match the dimension of this, because we're assuming, based upon this, that this is in fact, the earpiece itself is in fact a circle. Okay, so to aid in our symmetrical endeavor, okay, we're going to select this, copy, midpoint, oh, too much, too much. Let's lock the patent drawing, select that, move over to here. Uh, let's go to the right, no, to the front, yes. Okay, we're going to straighten this back out temporarily. Um, perspective, let's go ahead and take, them. unlock, take that, and that's gonna be right. Rotate, vertical. 
queen. Perspective. Okay. And then the front. And then we're going to move to take off the ortho. All right, interesting. So we know that the red is in fact in line orthogonally. Uh, oops, let's back up one more time. Let's do this. Ah, okay. So actually, we'll do this from perspective. We'll select the middle of that and to the midpoint of the surface. Okay, so now they're aligned. Uh, front, select. That. Okay, we're going to move. Oop. Visually centered along there, but if we look over here, it is off. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select the drawing surface, rotate, make this the center of a rotation, come over to here, visual center of that. There we go, so now it's aligned. Okay, so now it looks aligned over here mostly, but it's a little over here. So I'm going to lock the drawing again, select this, and scooch over until it looks even. Yeah, yeah, I think that mm, I think that will work for us. I think that will work for us. Okay, so essentially, we've been setting up these drawings in order of importance. So the top and side were first because we're going to be using those the most to establish our geometry. Okay, the sections. Uh, next, and then figure four, this end piece, last. This is only going to come into play in a couple of key areas further down the line. Okay. Um. All right. So now, perspective. Uh, we're going to group this. Lock, group again, rotate, ortho back on, boom, okay. Um, I'm going to select this, group, move based upon the midpoint and the intersection to this midpoint and intersection. Then we're going to say rotate. And then we're going to come over to the front view. And say rotate. One to four. Back to perspective. Looks like that. We're going to say copy. Copy from, say, midpoint intersection, and then over to this midpoint intersection, rotate, midpoint intersection as our reference point, front view, near, snap, boom. Okay. So, This, if we turn off the patent drawing, is essentially all the setup that we're going to need to then start making surfaces. So all the work we just did was to establish a workflow for our actual 3D modeling. Um, all right. And 
right, and save. Okay, so this I think is going to be end of part one. Um, part two is we're actually going to start getting into the 3D modeling. So I will stop it here and catch you on the uh, second part. All right, see ya.